goal for the Owls. Kaysen Jennings, who controls the rock right now, makes his first start of the season. Trail Burden unavailable today for KSU. Also the floor, Monty Harris, and there's Robinson opening it up with a dunk on the alley-oop from Jennings. And it's because if you look on the court for Tacoa Falls, their tallest player is 6'7". A lot of smaller guards, so right now for Kennesaw State, you're going to have to look over top, look above the rim to see if you can finish like DeMond Robinson did that possession. Mitchell swings it outside. Kenny Caldwell gets the roll in. Nice shot from Caldwell getting in the middle of the lane, feeling comfortable and looking comfortable with the jump shot pulled up for the two. Mid-range, 2-2. Two, two. Let's see how this game is going to go. Inside to Robinson again. Against Godfrey. Fades from the block, swish. And that's just a nice feel of the game. Robinson gave him the, the shoulder, right shoulder, and then came over with the hook. But feeling the game and letting it come to you, we saw Robinson do at that time, successful on the offensive end. Two for two today to start out, shooting 54% on the season as he comes up with a block there. Ninth in the ace center field goal percentage, big defensive play. Hey, if it ain't broke, you're trying to fix it. Now he goes inside. And an error to pass attempted a turnover for Kennesaw State. And that's big for Kennesaw State going into this ball game today is trying to reestablish its defensive identity. And again, this is how it started out. He talks about that height advantage. Robinson right over him for the slam. And we see Robinson goes to the bench and Peterson en enters the game. But right now with Robinson, you like to see what he's doing. Last possession, I would like for him to see him go up with the ball instead of passing it. But he's playing offensive defense for the Owls right now. Hartenberg off the glass. The junior out of Augusta, averaging just under eight points, five boards a game. Tacoa Falls 9-8 and eight on the season, playing its first game since the 18th of December. Youngblood from long range off to the right and snared by Mitchell. You want to see this for Tacoa Falls because last game against Georgia State, they were really worked on with the, on the boards. So right now, you're going to have to fix that box out like you did that possession and come up with the defensive rebound and push it to the offensive sets. Caldwell misfires in the three and a long offensive rebound. Good contact there in front of the Kennesaw State bench. That's Hartenberg tracking it down. Tacoa Falls led by its second year head coach, Leonard Epps. Eastern Kentucky grad, originally out of Louisville. His second year coming out of Champion Christian College in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And last year, one of the most difficult years to be a first-year head coach, right, Terrence? Yeah, a lot of adjustments, changes with COVID and everything. But this year, you got your games back in. You playing enough games. Now you see what your team can do. And Tacoa Falls come out right now early in attack mode. Hartenberg showing off all the moves as he finds some room in the lane and gives the Screaming Eagles a two-point lead. Cole Falls is asking the question of how are we the underdogs? We're coming in, we strap up, we put on our jerseys just like you guys do, and they're coming out right now to try to prove the point that we're here to play. Rogers, too strong in the three, offensive snare for Jennings. Now it's Youngblood. Money, Chris Youngblood from the top of the key. Allowing the game to come to you, Chris Youngblood receives the rebound. Go straight up with it, but it's just allowing the game to come to you. Last year, we saw him forcing some shots. This year, not so much. Been surgical and really been selective with his shots. Continues his trend of making a tray in every single game for Kennesaw State. This is a long two, and it's short by Mitchell. Rogers, little floater, collects his miss. Jennings, strong again. You see these threes, it's Kennesaw State. They're going to eventually make them because these are open threes. As you see, Tacoa Falls take and attack it. It's going to stay here. But right now, Kennesaw is taking a lot of threes, but they're open threes, and you're not mad about these. They're going to eventually fall, but they're taking a lot of threes to start the game. And Kennesaw State led by third-year head coach Amir Abdur Rahim. The Owls and Abdur Rahim playing their first game since December 22nd at Nebraska. Game televised on ESPNU. So both these teams returning to the hardwood following the Christmas break. And for the Owls, the last non-conference game of the year before hosting Jacksonville on January 5th. Mitchell Short off the bench and a tapper by Grant Sanders, the freshman out of Union Grove. 
You want to give yourself a chance if your Takoa falls, attack it on the rebounds, offensive, defensive, and that's what they're doing. They got to put back two points off the offensive rebound. Jennings fouled on the jumper from the elbow. And you'd like to see a team like Takoa fall, as we see, so Spencer just tying the team, his shoes, but you like to see like a team like Takoa Falls because smaller team, but they're coming out with a lot of mm -hmm. resentment because they have a lot of anger and they just want to win this game. But two, three zones, that's what they're going to play, a one, two, two. And then also switching on screens because when you have a smaller team, it's going to be hard to guard the bigger guys down low for the outs. Kennesaw State as a team shooting 71% from the charity strike. That's seventh in the A Sun. <laughs> Jennings knocks in the second. And we'll see Jameer Moultrie off the bench and check in for Kennesaw State. And off this made free throw, Kennesaw State goes uh, automatically into the full court press. A 1-2-2 one, one, two, two it looks like. They're looking to trap on the side, see if they can get some quick steals because they're always active in the lanes when they go to this press. And speaking of a steal, uh, ooh, smaller team getting up above the rims and see if you can win the game that way. Brandon Stroud in off the bench. Steps back with a long two and it rolls through. And this is what he has in his back, the ability to break someone down one-on-one -on -one and just pull up on them. We haven't seen this much in the in the season so far, but if he can provide this for the Owls, they become a different team. He and Alex Peterson check in off the bench. Jameer Moultrie just came in prior to the media timeout. Rogers almost had the swipe. Caldwell tries to draw the foul and he gets it against Moultrie. If you're the Owls, you know, you gotta know the personnel. Caldwell likes to get a two dribble pull up Last time he got in the middle lane and knocked it down. This time, did the same thing. Moultrie a little too close. Got him on the shooting hand. He's at the free throw line shooting two for Tacoa Falls. And he's the local product, former Stevens County Indian out of Tacoa, shooting 41% from the floor, averaging just under eight points a game for Tacoa Falls. Nolan, so far we've seen different people coming in and out of the game for the Owls. In this game right here, you kind of want to see who do you have, what identity do you have before going to conference play, what does each team and what's each team look like and with the chemistry. So right now they're going to mix it up a little bit for the Owls to see who plays best together. And Peterson turns it over on the double dribble. Here's Luke Gilstorf in. You see it there, that travel, the shuffling of the feet, I should say. And Peterson, one of those, seen limited minutes over the past handful of games, mainly due to rotational strategies for Kennesaw State and different matchups. But he and Harris are someone that exhibited the defense that the coaching staff wanted to see over the past few practices and that they're looking for here today. And there's an effort play right there from Youngblood getting tied up at a jump ball called fighting on the floor with Gilsdor. And, and, and before we said pay attention, I said pay attention to the defensive stance that Chris Youngblood applies today. And that effort right then on the defensive end is what they need. That's what Chris Youngblood needs. Plays like that gets him started and get him, gets him going also with the team. Youngblood seventh in the A Sun, averaging 13.3 points per game. Also seventh in rebounding, just under six boards a game. And there's a strong move to the rack. No foul called as Smith hits the floor. Stroud pushes the pace for KSU. Youngblood from the corner connects. If I'm, if I'm scouting Kennesaw State, one thing I noticed from the jump is Youngblood is going to find that corner. You're going to have to find the corner every single time if you're the Tacoa Falls because more than likely you're going to find Youngblood spotting up for threes. It's his second three of the ball game, averaging 2.2 a game. The tops in the A Sun in that category as well. Just a sophomore. And the drive short there from Mitchell. Stroud, Robinson, Young Blood off the mark. Well, he was in the corner there, Terrence. <laughs> he said he'd be there. He'll be there. It didn't go down, but that's the <laughs> shot that you want for the Owls. Finding Chris Young Blood. He already knocked two down, like you mentioned before. Could have been a third one, but great play for Kennesaw of being, of being selfless and passing the ball. Mitchell with the jump stop. Youngblood with a swipe. 
Gelsdorf and the Screaming Eagles get it back, though. It's the response time. You get a turnover for the Owls. What do you do now on the defensive end to respond for that uh, turnover? Tacoa Falls now get some penetration to try to get some easy buckets. Gelsdorf a long three rolls out. Jennings open, buries it. What's happening right now? Kennesaw State's pushing him. Tacoa Falls to try to prevent the transition. They're getting all in the paint. Then Kennesaw State is finding their three-point shooters on the line because everyone's already in the paint, and they're just squaring it up right now and knocking it down like Jennings did that possession. And you said KSU wouldn't get mad at those three-pointers they missed earlier because they were all open looks. Yep. And there is a beautiful play by Smith as he dishes it off to Sanders. Great play, great penetration and kick. But no, you're, these are wide open shots. You can't get mad as a coach because I know the time and the, the dedication they put in. As we see, Brandon Stroud lines up another three. These are pretty much like practice shots. Since the Owls started one for four from beyond the arc, they have made three of their last four. Yeah. Sitting four for eight here in the first half. Gilsdorf tries to answer, and he bottoms it out. And he missed the previous one. Now he finds himself in the corner. He did, and, and, and pretty much he hasn't disappointed because we see greatness from, glimpse of greatness from Spencer. A lot of times it's for the three, but he's an all-around type of player who can get buckets any way he wants to on the court. KSU has made four of its last five from the four. Three of those have been three-pointers. Rogers spinning, fading, and it falls out to the right. Again, that time you saw three Eagles in the lane waiting for the rebound, not streaking out and trying to get on a fast break. Let's secure the rebound before we go into transition. Hartenberg over to Gilsdorf. Releases, bottoms it out. Gilsdor flashing the range. Who needs teammates when I got a clip like this? Pulling up from deep that time with the left hand looking pretty, but then Kennesaw State Moultrie comes back and answers with a two-pointer for himself. Moultrie coming off his second 12-point performance of the season at Nebraska. Gains his first bucket there. And a turnover by Kobe Corner. Here's Gilsdorf. Dribble, dribble. I got a little bit of space. Feeling it? Just on the island. Just, just pretty much just dancing out there on the island. I'm going to take this dance, everybody. Slept to the side. Pulling up again with the left hand. It's pretty, man. It's pretty. Robinson back in with the right hand. On, Makes it look easy. Had the first four points of the ball game for Kennesaw State. And they go back to work with the transfer out of Murray State. And if you're Godfrey, you're going to have to push Robinson out just a little bit, even bait him to take that 15-footer shot. But right now, that hook shot is his go-to. You're going to have to try to find a way to push him out from that shot. Hartenberg falls, loose ball. Takua falls, saves it. That's corner at midcourt. He goes around. Robinson high off the window. <laughs> the bitch is going crazy right now because it's just a nice move. Get inside, going around the defender and finishing it with the left hand. Robinson open, make sure it's a three, sure. Yeah, again, I'm not mad at it. The big man's probably maybe one or two three-pointers for the season, but he's open. Again, these are the shots they practice, mm -hmm. and they're going to need the four or the five to step out sometimes to make those shots, especially in conference play. Well, it would have been his first. We'll see if it comes later on. Hartenberg drives the lane, stops, spins. Another stop by Kennesaw State in the paint. Stroud sprinting up the floor, and he's hacked by Hartenberg. And that's just a frustration foul from Hartenberg that time. Came on the offensive end, felt like he didn't get the call on the defensive end. Terrell Burtman, uh, Stroud goes on the break, and he just fouls him and wraps him up. Just a frustration foul, but also a good stop because Brandon Stroud was on his way possibly to getting two points. Two fouls against Dakota Falls, three against Kennesaw State. And you see Coach conferring there. Questioning, eh, maybe it's a little bit more than just the comment. And the wrap-up, I think they're discussing the wrap-up. Mm -hmm. Play on. Inbounds to Moultrie. Moultrie open. Off the heel. Stroud with an offensive snare. 
the sophomore with contact, and he will go to the line. Aggression, you like to see that. What he did was once he grabbed the rebound, he didn't look to kick it out. Stroud got the rebound, and he was in attack mode, finishing with the left. He didn't finish, but he's at the free throw line shooting two. But you don't want a guy like him to pass it out down low. He's 6'7". Try to go up to the hole and get the finish. Stroud coming off the bench for the first time today. Kennesaw State going with a different starting five for the first time all year. Terrell Burden unavailable today. Kaysen Jennings, who you see on the left side of the lane, making his first start of the season. And what are your thoughts on Stroud coming off the bench here tonight? And you can see already filling up the stat sheet. I love it because it gives it gives everyone a different look. The first unit you have you have players who can score. So down place and Brandon Stroud in that second unit, he can now open up his offensive game a little bit more. And I know they want him to do that. He wants to do that as well. But if I can just speak about Brandon and also players like Peterson, it's so difficult to stay in the game when you have a change. Because a lot of times players start to ask, "What did I do wrong?" It's not that you did any anything wrong, but you mention it. Situational basketball, and that's what you're seeing here today. And commend both players for accepting the roles they had to take on today. Six point lead for Kennesaw State at home. Smith swings it out on the edge. Mitchell open just inside the charity stripe. And Tacoa Falls has had a handful of looks there near the free throw line, just haven't gone through, but seemingly everything on the perimeter of the wings has. Yep. And not this will anything. be waved off with an offensive turnover. Yeah, and they're, they're not forcing it. They want to get in the lane. That's the first objective is to get in the lane. Let's see if we can get these easy baskets and then settle for the three. But you see the offensive foul right here. Just a moving screen from Peterson. So a minute past the halfway mark of the opening half. Final non-conference game of the year for Kennesaw State in the regular season for Tacoa Falls, second of three straight. It's Division I opponents up next, January 2nd at Charleston Southern. Sean Ware, five to shoot for Tacoa Falls. Smith spins, throws it up, and rolls out the left side and steals the pass, intended for Jennings. Smith swatted away, Stroud with a block. Jennings all ahead, lays it in. <laughs> Two points, but you saw that time getting a rebound, a careless pass from Brandon, but they come back, play good defense, and then go into transition for two points. But right now, I think I think for Tacoa Falls, you're really going to have to look to get more on the inside and finish it, possibly drawing some fouls to get them in foul trouble. Stroud, seven points, six rebounds, and a block. Filling up the statue. There's another block down low. Youngblood all alone. And Kennesaw State is doing a nice job there getting out of the open court following a defensive stand. That was Peterson with the swat, and it's now a 10-point lead. 6-0 run for the Owls. to Cole Falls easily getting in the lane, just holding on to the ball once they get inside. Kennesaw State has active hands. Once they get inside, come out a lot of steals, but you're going to have to protect the ball if it's Cole Falls once you get in the lane. I think there's a second or third time <laughs> Smith has tried to draw the foul and then just heaves it up. That time it rolled through. It did. He did the last possession. Didn't, come, didn't go through last time, but that time flipped it up, went in. Regardless, it's two points for your team. Nice job there poking it away. Stroud recovers. Jennings looks at the three off the front iron. Fast break point so far for the Owls. KSU fans have to be happy with the development of that young man they just saw on their screen, Chris Youngblood. Eight points tonight. Rebound is steal in 10 minutes of action. Top 10 in the A-Sun in scoring and rebounding coming into this ball game tonight. Already a couple of three-pointers. Giving him a tray in every ball game this year for KSU, all 13 of them. Last year, we saw him have some growing pains, which happens to freshmen. Growing pains that you learn from, he's learned from those. This year, becomes a different player. And you see right now, Tacoa Falls lines up a three. Comes up with a big-time offensive rebound. Lance Smith, he misses. Out ahead to Moultrie. In the lane is hacked by Mitchell. Most are just trying to glide over to the right side to finish it. 
Send it to the, to the free throw line and see if he can convert these two free throws. And the line shooting two, you're out. Number 12, Demir Moultrie. Moultrie in his first year with Kennesaw State. Following a successful stint at North Carolina Central up in Durham. Annually one of the best teams in the MEAC, not only in the regular season, but seemingly invincible in the tournament. Led the conference in three-point shooting a couple years at LaSalle prior to NCCU. And a luxury that the Owls have this year with, with the guard play, you have Moultrie, you have Jennings, you have Birding who's out tonight, but you have three guards that can, you can insert at any moment which makes it difficult because you can insert them when they're tired and continue the pressure and the pressure on the team. Sanders with a no look pass to Rankins. And the fastball goes off his mid for a turnover. Gilsdorf back in for Tacoa Falls. He was displayed the range. Freshman out of Spartanburg, he was homeschooled. It's a new experience for him, and he's blended in quite well. Part of the first full recruiting class for Leonard Epps in his second year at the helm at Tacoa Falls. This is a much improved ball club from a year ago as Rodgers runs the lane and has the roll in high off the glass. First bucket for Rodgers. Finishing it high, not standing, keeping it down low, finishing it high, got up with the running uh, hook, finishing it too. But that's what you're going to need from the Owls, getting Spencer Rodgers on the goal, not only selling him for the three, but get him on the goal, get him penetrating, finishing it strong at the basket. Caldwell stops, fades, off the heel, and Rodgers clashes in for the board, a loose ball. Peterson recovers, finds Moultrie. Moultrie. Uh, try to hand it off to Harris. It's tipped out of bounds off the hands of a screaming eagle, and Tacoa falls in disbelief. I think that was a universal reaction as soon as the referee <laughs> gave that tip ball calls immediately. So that time again, Peterson comes off as Rogers squares up again for a wide open three. Tacoa Falls, if you're talking and you're the coaches, we cannot continue to allow Kennesaw State to have wide open shots. Let's make these contested shots. If they still make them, oh well, but they cannot continue to leave Kennesaw State open because they're really going to push this lead up. There's an open look in the zone by Mitchell with an offensive snare. Caldwell, no look. That's the result. Peterson with the board. And you fish out, you're getting 100 shots up a day, and that's the rhythm that he already knows because of practice. It's just right now, you're going to have to extend your defense if you're the Eagles. By the way, it's school's out game. Kids 12 and under free. Aliou goes off the rim there. So we had a nice look at a youth team here in attendance. Got a handful of those. Nothing better as a kid than finding your way on the big screen, which they showed here at the Convocation Center. <laughs> day made. Mom, Dad, you don't have to worry about the popcorn later. And there's a hard foul, a late whistle against Harris on the drive by Smith. Smith, this is what he's going to have to do. He cannot sit back, and I know you're going to have to be a facilitator. You're going to have to really rebound, too. But right now, the game is kind of getting out of control. For Smith, he's going to have to insert himself, be more assertive offensively. That time, you saw him doing that, getting to the hole, getting fouled at the free throw line, shooting two. In and out the Salem High School product, and he's had a strong tendency to be able to get to the rack this year. It's exactly what he did there. Call him the Little Bulldog. So 6'1", 200. I don't know how little he is driving in. A couple years in the junior college ranks. His first year at Tacoa Falls. Oh, junior college, I remember those days, man. So it's a, it's a road, it's a rewarding road to get here, man. I, and I understand, I can relate to a guy like Lance Smith. And once he gets on the floor, it's something that he's always trying to prove as a JUCO player. Okay, what do you remember? What's the good out of JUCO? I mean, everything, but the relationships that you build, the uh, it's the practices, man. Like, you have to you have to really, you don't have the resources a lot of time in a junior college, so you have to uh, make them and improvise a lot of time. But that creates character. That keep, creates the will to win and try to provide but also just the JUCO. The negative is also not having the resources like the, the bigger schools do. Tacoa Falls, the NCCAA. Here's Robinson at the line. 
Bearing the first there. I'll share a story with you, Nolan. Please. Both years, um, I went to the Southern Union Community College. The first year, we made it to uh, Hutchinson, Kansas. That's where the tournament is. Mm -hmm. Both years, this is a struggle of junior college. Again, the resources. Take the 16 hour, 16 hour trip on the bus Ooh. to Hutch both years. And that is a ride for 16 hours. <laughs> Young blood going on a ride here as he bounces over to Jennings. Maintained control and had it stripped away by Rankins. By the way, this wasn't Greyhound, man. This, was <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't one of those sleeper yeah. buses. Yeah, it wasn't Greyhound. Another turnover. Back and forth they go. Youngblood finishes. Great patience from Youngblood that time, looking off the defender, getting the defender to commit to the to the left, think he's going to pass it, but then finishing with his right. Great patience that time for Youngblood. So how do you kill 16 hours on a bus ride? Sleep, playing cards, crying, uh, just <laughs> fighting, just a little bit of everything, man. 16 hours. Watching the playoff games tomorrow. Yeah. Won't say on air who I'm pulling for, but no. if you know me, you, you're going to know exactly who I'm pulling for. This is hard. And a turnover on the inbounds for Tacoma Falls. Probably. Being an Auburn fan, it's kind of hard for me too, but <laughs> 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 I won't say either. <laughs> KSU and Gold, Tacoma Falls in navy blue here tonight. Jennings feeds to Robinson. They connect in the alley-oop on the first possession for KSU. Stroud coming off the bench for the first time this season has performed well. And a screaming eagle foul. And the, and the referees are stepping in at this point. You see DeMond Robinson, you see number 13, Rankins. They've been battling on the inside, have a little chippiness going on. And the referee that time had to step in and say, guys, I know this is a battle, but you're going to have to settle down because you don't want this to get out of control. With this big lead, you don't want to get anyone hurt. Just play some solid basketball. And I'm glad a referee that time noticed it and he stepped in before it got out of control. And there's Leonard Epps, second year head coach for Tacoa Falls, pleading his case. And without a doubt, there has been a lot of contact in this ball game that hasn't been called. I'm not saying it was right or wrong, but it has transpired. Bodies have hit the floor. And usually, just like you said, sleeping, playing cards, crying, <laughs> fighting. That's, that's the routine. <laughs> Wake up and do it over again, man. Let's, that's the routine. And, but for both teams, and I, I spoke about it before in a previous game, knowing the personnel of not only the players but of the referees, knowing how they call. In this game so far, they've been letting them play. So once you go to the hole, you can't anticipate that foul. You're going to have to finish it without the anticipation of getting calls. The Owls get another steal. Out to Youngblood. Offensive snare. Loose ball. Tacoa Falls gathers possession. By the way, for Robinson, that trip to the line. Four for four tonight. He's now in double figures. Time with Youngblood. The game high, 10 points. It's Kobe corner. To McKenzie reverses down the right side. Too high. And bump to Cole Falls. As you see, Rogers is getting into the hole and getting fouled. But if I'm to Cole Falls, as he goes for one-on-one, -on -one, but if I'm to Cole Falls, I'm having a discussion. We can't help so much because we've helped and try to stop the penetration, which leaves the three-point shooters open on the wing. At this point, you're going to have to limit the help to stay attached to the three-point shooters because if not, Kennesaw State is really going to pull away from this game. You said it, Rogers to the line, shooting one and one for KSU. Cole LaRue in for the first time today. As Rogers rolls it in. 78% free throw shooter this season. He's had at least two three-pointers and five straight for KSU. So it's one for two from beyond the arc. Here today, now one for two at the line. You know, I can't wait to the second half because it's going to be interesting to see the sets in, in the strategy that Kennesaw State comes out in on a defensive and offensive end. What are you going to do? What, what sets are you going to try to implement going into conference play to see if you can iron out the kinks? Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting in the second half to see what they do coming out for both teams. Corner. Off the heel. Jennings. Rodgers open. Short. Yeah, this is 
Another shot that was wide open. Youngblood comes up with the deflection, almost a steal. Another shot for the Owls, where Nicole Falls, the closest player, five to six feet away. You're really going to have to limit the help. They stay attached to the shooters. Smith in for Gilsdorf. Gilsdorf leads away with six points. Smith, one of eight from the floor. Three points, one of two at the line. Nico gets, Falls has missed its last eight from the floor. And gets, as we see, Kenneth almost comes up with another steal. McKenzie. And there's one that rolls in for Tacoa Falls. First points for McKenzie off the bench. Jennings following the shot bait into the lane. Fades away. Off the front iron, tipped ball. Possession with Tacoa Falls. A great stop for the Eagles that time. Jennings got on the inside. They could have gave up. Jennings looked left and right. He decided to go up. They got a deflection. He came up with the with the ball. Eagles ball. Coming up at the half. We'll put a mic on Brandon Stroud during a Kennesaw State practice. See how he sounds. Take a look at some of the best plays. Break it down on the stat sheet. And check our out-of-town scoreboard. McKenzie again open just inside the free throw line. Too much mustard. But Alex, I don't know if that was a breakdown or maybe they saw something on the tape, but they allowed him to take that shot. As you see, Jennings lined up another three from the corner. Uncontested, but that time for the Owls, they allowed him to get in the hole and take that shot. Fortunately, he missed it for the Owls. McKenzie gathers some air on the three-point attempt. We'll see Rodgers back in for Kennesaw State. So both offenses cooling off here are the final few minutes of the first half. Kennesaw State hasn't scored a field goal in almost three minutes of change. Tacoa Falls, one of its last 11. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's digging yourself a hole. Once these shots are not going down, and you, you have the turnovers, as you see young boy, he's getting fouled going to the free throw line shooting one on one. But you're, you're one of 11 and you have any turnovers, it's hard to crawl back into a game regardless of who you are. But they're going to have to find a way in the second half to try to like knock this lead down. That means you're going to make some shots. You're going to have to start making some shots. The Valdosta native, DJ Thompson. Build for the foul there. Youngblood has it go in and out. The Owls are 9 of 13 in free throw shooting in the first half. We see a switch of defense for the Owls that time. They were in the press. Coach calls something out. They immediately run back to a 2-3 zone, and they're going to allow Cole Falls to take that mid-range shot in the middle because they haven't shown us. They haven't shown that they can make it consistently. Mm -hmm. Godfrey misfires there. And you're right. I think I've seen maybe one of those roll in for yeah. Tacoa Falls here this half. And I wouldn't extend it. I wouldn't take the middle guy who's supposed to protect the middle. I would leave them back to rebound. I'm going to really bait you into taking that shot if I'm the Owls. Shot clock is turned off here for the final 10 plus seconds. You know how I commented that there weren't a lot of whistles early on? Yeah. The law of averages, right? Yeah, man, yeah. So they picked it up definitely in the half. You see the coach, you see Tacoa Falls coach at that time just putting his hand on his head because the frustration is setting in. Three or four possessions, we, we came down having senseless fouls to send, a, to send Kennesaw State to the line. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, they haven't been able to convert um, the last three free throws for the outs. That was on Godfrey, his first and the team's 10th of the half. And Young Blood goes one for two at the line. Smith sprints. Godfrey. Cannot corral it. Weekend, but it got canceled. Everything is going to get canceled, brother. Still holding on. 30 points per game, 15 boards, Absolute, 10 dimes. Absolutely Triple not. Double. Yeah, absolutely not. I'm maybe 10. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson, that's exactly how Kennesaw State started the first half, bidding it down to the big man. Robinson with 12 points, leading KSU. Here's another defensive play by the Owls. Jennings. Youngblood. 
cashes in the open look. And this is deja vu. You mentioned it, Robinson first coming down and getting the bucket. And then on the defensive end, same thing first half. They take it down. Robinson gets a big block. Same thing happened the first. Starts it off the same way in the second half for Robinson. Two blocks for DeMond Robinson in just nine minutes of action tonight. Mitchell had it swiped away, but a foul called against Rodgers. You love to see this, but it's, all those, it's also one of those things where you don't want to pick up bad habits. You don't want to get in the habit of reaching because you got the lead at this point. Try to slide your feet a little bit more because once you get in the conference play, anytime you drop your hands, the referee is more than likely going to call that foul. Don't get into these bad habits because you have the lead. Ware controls the rock for Tacoa Falls. Mitchell with an open look near the elbow, Youngblood. Collects the board. That's his fifth rebound. Rogers to the corner, hit the ground hard there. Young blood back to back bottoms for the trade. Hey, give it up for Tacoa Falls that time. They at least had someone in the face and they had contested the shot, but Young blood, better offense at that time, squaring it up and knocked down the three from the side. 17 points for Chris Young blood. He has four three pointers. It's the fifth time this season, 16th time in his career he's done that. Sophomore out of Tuscaloosa. Caldwell stopped. Hartenberg with a spin in the lane. And then a late whistle called against Robinson. If you're Tacoa Falls, you're going to have to find offense from somewhere. Your leading score right now is only six points. So you're going to have to find someone that can put the ball in a hole right now because of six points, three points. We're going to need someone, if, if we're, if we're on uh, talking about Tacoa Falls, we're going to need somebody that's going to just take the wheel right now and put the team on their backs and get to score offensively. We thought it was going to be Lance Smith, but right now he's struggling so far tonight. First foul against Robinson. And subs for Kennesaw State as Harris and Youngblood head to the bench. Mason Cordoball in for the first time. And Brandon Stroud with a strong first half re-enters for KSU. Stroud with seven points, seven rebounds, three assists in 14 minutes of action. Tacoa falls with a steal. That was Hartenberg. Mitchell stopped. Caldwell a long two. The inside of the iron. Eighth rebound for Stroud. Kennesaw goes on a break. Quarterbone with a three. Misses from the open. Look, offensive rebound for Robinson. Tries to feed it inside, and he's fouled in the process. Kennesaw stayed on that turnover. They weren't expecting for Tacoa Falls to go on a full court press. They came out. Kennesaw State wasn't expecting it. Tossed it up on the sideline. Tacoa Falls came up with a steal. These are the looks and max up mix ups that you're going to have to uh, do if you're Tacoa Falls. Mix it up a little bit. Give Kennesaw State a different look. Rogers nails the three. Second three for Spencer Rogers, nine points tonight. When we go look at film tomorrow for the Eagles, we're going to point out Lance Smith. That time, you didn't fight around the screen hard enough to try to stay attached to Spencer Rogers. Comes up with a block, but you're going to have to fight around those screens because, again, there's too many owls that's wide open and, and taking these shots. Spencer Rogers made him pay that time. Jennings attempted to draw the charge, instead called with a blocking Back foul. Third foul here in the second half for KSU. We'll see Gilsdorf switch back in. Time for the team lead with six points here tonight. A couple of threes. And Gilsdorf, he went in his back early. He was on an island, mixed it up a little bit, and squared up for the three. But he may be the guy that can put the team on his back uh, because he can get to the lane. He can shoot. Let's see if he can be that guy for the, the Eagles. Jennings into the hands of Stroud. Stroud. And another foul. Had Rodgers trailing. Rodgers tripped up out on the wing. Ran out of options, said, I've got to take this one myself. <laughs> Stroud did the right thing. He saw the smaller guard in front of him on the transition break, and the nuance of the game is it's the sweep down low. That time, he went slow. He swept down low, got the foul, and tried to go up. 
but just a heads up play for, for Brandon Stroud at position. Alex Peterson in for Devon Robinson. Jameer Moultrie switches in for Jennings. Stroud misses. Orpheus Rankins collects for Tacoa Falls. And Leonard Epps said the goal for today, we're, we're going to play to win. Not coming here just to run around for 40 minutes, but we're going to find ourselves in a dogfight. And again, Tacoa Falls did early on, and then the game got out of hand as Mitchell sinks that open jumper just inside the free throw line, where the Scream Eagles have had multiple looks. But I think if you were to look at it from a bigger scale, as Stroud goes from the left side off the heel, Tacoa Falls from last year to this year, again, a much improved ball club. And a strong move there as Mitchell draws the whistle. Much improved, and I think they have more depth this time. You're able to go on that bench. No, it's not going to your favor right now, but they have a, a deeper team uh, this season for, for the Eagles. And there's Harris waiting to get back in as Epps coaches up the freshman Gilsdorf out of Spartanburg. Averaging five points in 12 minutes per contest. His first year in the collegiate ranks. Mitchell rolls it in. One of the best free throw shooters in the squad at 86% of the season. Returning All-American. Got off to a bit of a slow start. But has displayed more confidence in his game over the past month. Short on the second. Following the Peterson rebound. And the Eagles understands the assignment at this point. We're going to have to find ways to get back in this game. Let's put some pressure. Let's full court press. See if we can get some steals. At this point, you're going to have to take a risk and see if you can come up with some turnovers, some steals to get on a break. Moultrie makes the three-pointer. First three for Moultrie, KSU 9 of 20 in three-point shooting. Missed lay in by Smith on the drive. Rogers switches hands. Underneath, and a nice feed on the assist to Mason Cordelbaum. It was two shifts, shift from left to right. Pause for a second. Again, shift to left to right, get down low, and finding your man down low, Cordelbaum with the easy finish down low. He's got the Rocco socks. You said they're new, right? Absolutely, man. Listen, I am a, a sock connoisseur. Anybody who gives me a pair of socks, I just like to rock. I like colors, man. I like it to pop. You got any cool socks, Nolan? Got a few. My wife would say it's a big problem. It's <laughs> Peterson. It's foul down low. I'll leave it at that. Just, let's just say I don't have a shortage when it comes to <laughs> socks, man. Um, collected a lot of them over the years, man. But these are one of my favorite pairs. My niece gave them to me. Pretty cool. So we thought we'd see a little bit more of Peterson here in this ball game than once prior. Again, discussing the rotational strategy matchups for Kennesaw State, which is putting a close to one of the most difficult non-conference schedules that's played in quite some time, ranked 35th toughest in the nation. Peterson looking for his first points here. Three rebounds today, and there's the first bucket. And after the first shot, he went in, and he, he understood exactly what he did wrong the second time he came back out and fixed it on a free throw, and he converted it. But Peterson is a guy who was high energy, and they're going to need his play in energy going into conference play. Caldwell on a beautiful bounce to Kobe Corner, but he travels to the baseline. And Moultrie comes up with a turnover. Corner makes up for it there on a nice Euro into the lane, and it rolls around the world and through. 
and it was just miscommunication that time. Moultrie thought Brandon was going to stay back with him. Brandon walked away, came up with the turnover. But you now see Tacoa Falls picking up the intensity. But you cannot pick up the intensity, but still leave the shooters open. Kennesaw is making you pay for it. You got to bring the intensity, but still have the ability to close out on the shooters. Moultrie just stepped into his second. Loose ball, Stroud behind the back to Youngblood. Now over to Moultrie and a whistle. Oh, they're just getting saucy at this point. Hey, that was Globetrotter-esque right there. <laughs> they just getting a little saucy at this point. Everybody gets involved. Going on the break, three hours, touch the ball, almost finish it. But either way, Moultrie's at the line shooting too. The Owls 11 of 19 in free throw shooting here tonight. Moultrie buries it there. Back to back double figure games for Moultrie again, a 12 point performance against Nebraska. Someone who missed some time with the leave earlier this year and is now really starting to find his role, his rhythm within the team. And that's a really good thing for Kennesaw State developing a three-point shooter and now Moultrie is someone who can do a little bit more than just shoot that three-point ball, but being consistent as an upperclassman, starting to be comfortable in his rhythm as a sun play begins next week. When I say it's instrumental that he finds it because now going into conference play, Moultrie has found that point of he knows his identity and his role on the team. He doesn't play outside of his role. He stays within who he is. He's going to make the wide open three. He's going to get to the hole. He's going to find you if you're on the break. So finding his game right now before conference play is great for the outs. But the Owls, you see that they go to a smaller a smaller lineup themselves. They're going to experiment a little bit. Put Brandon Stroud at the four, LaRue at the five. And let's see how we can do this. And this is a lineup that you can push it up and down the court. Hartenberg bottoms out. Luke Hartenberg knocks down the three. The third for Tacoa Falls. Been patient, finding Jennings on the wing for another three. Just the patient. Brandon kicks it to the top to Jennings. And Moultrie, Moultrie then passes over, not being selfish, finds Jennings on the side for the three. And the stick back for Grant Sanders. This is what we expected from a Tacoa Falls team who's feisty, who's going to be aggressive on the rebound. The last two possessions, they've shown that. Cole Rue on the block. Defender turns, falls, LaRue drops it in. And we've got a whistle. Here it is again. Uh, wow. A flop warning wow. called on Grant Sanders. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not at, I've just never, I've never seen that call. It needs to be called a lot of times, but I've never seen this call. Yeah, that's a first for me as well. <laughs> oh, the pause in and out. Mitchell almost had a highlight real play there. Oh, Mitchell wishes he can have that back because you see Brown and Stratt again. Absorbing the contact, getting down low and getting fouled. But Mitchell, great move. I know he wishes he can have it back to finish it that, but that was a great move. Sanders call for the foul. Let's go back to this flop warning. Yeah, you see the bro. It's definitely a flop. Um, the referee signal telling him to get off the ground. Uh, paused the game for a second and said it was a flopping warning. Never seen it, but if we can, uh, maybe send a message to the NBA. Maybe this call should be called in the NBA a little bit more because you see a lot of it. First time ever seeing this one. Never called on LeBron. Those are oh, always not. real. <laughs> to the rule book we go. So a tech up next. Wow. Should we have another flop? What constitutes a flop, though? I just feel like it's one of those things in football, every call is a holding just about. <laughs> just don't call it. What, what constitutes a flop? 
We're going to get a full breakdown of that next broadcast. Please. Hartenberg tried to go two for two from beyond the arc. Moultrie with a nice effort on the defensive rebound, but turns it over. It's Moultrie's second time turning it over on this four-court press of Tacoa Falls. you got to be more protective of the ball. Every possession counts, regardless of if you have a big lead. You're going to have to protect this ball if you're Moultrie because he's going to have to win the trust of the coaching staff to put him in the games in the conference play. Mitchell on the feed. And LaRue fouled on the pause there from DJ Thompson. So now it's Co Falls has found some success there. On the back door break. And I have to give credit to the pressure that they've applied coming out in the second half. They went to a, a full court press and really forced Kennesaw to make decision full court, not just on half court. Full court, we're going to make you decide on what you're going to do. LaRue's hook off to the right. LaRue up top. Moultrie takes the lay-in. Great decision. I was saying up top, but the defender started backing up on Brandon Stroud, trying to protect the oop. Moultrie at the same time finishing it with the left hand because he saw the defender backing it up, had a, a wide open layup with the left. 13 for Moultrie, that's a Kennesaw State high for him. Career high is 19. Mitchell spins, gives it off underneath the rim to Sanders. And an out. And just kind of something, me personally here, Terrence, is Grant Sanders sinks in the second. I think this Kennesaw State team, when the time comes and they show that ability to win the close game, I kind of feel like that's the hump, right? Yep. That's the hump that you get one of those, confidence builds up, you feel better next time it comes up, and then that really continues to roll. And then once you're in conference play, you've got a bit more of that routine in the schedule mm -hmm. where you've got your midweek game, you've got your weekend game. It's a little less variables as to how soon you're going to get back on the floor. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. As we see Jennings, a great move. 100% agree with you because once you get into conference play, they're not going to be too many blowouts. They're going to be games that go down to the wire and you're going to have to be able to finish these games. So getting over the hump and being able to close out these games will be the next level for this uh, this Owls team. Hartenberg over Kordelbaum off the iron. Eight rebounds for Rogers. In striking distance of a triple-double. Nine points. Five assists, LaRue off the glass. Give the ball down low to the big man and just let him work. That time LaRue received the ball. It doesn't take a lot sometimes, just a couple dribbles, shooting it over the right shoulder and finishing it for two points. It's four for LaRue. Fan off favorite. the bench, sophomore out of Mobile. You're right, as soon as he came in, the crowd <laughs> erupted. <laughs> Jennings, hard to the floor, no foul. LaRue with a rebound, Sanders fights for it. Unable to keep it in bounds. Great effort from Sanders that time, just trying to get that loose ball to keep there, to keep the possession with the Tacoa Falls. But that time, Jennings got pushed down and the crowd went crazy. But Kennesaw State stayed with the ball and came up with a turnover. Here it is. Hey, you see oh, that left hand there from yeah, Smith. Jordan Nash a little bit push. Spring switch in for Cole LaRue. So won't get another look at it. First action for Springs here this evening. Portal bomb. Young blood is fouled from the corner three. He lives there. He lives in the left corner, the right corner. It's Cole Falls, you're gonna have to find him, but if you're the owls. You love the fact that he knows exactly where he's going because every time he can find him in the corner, this is his shot. Gets fouled that time, shooting three. Nate Springs entered the game, and I talked about playing above the rim. Playing against shorter guys, you want to see Nate Springs go up for a couple of alley-oops, get some big-time rebounds right now because he has that ability. And plus, he towers over all of the players on the court at this point. 
I heard that's how Youngblood fills out all his online forms. <laughs> right corner, <laughs> KSU Convocation <laughs> Center, 590 Cobb Avenue, Kennesaw, Georgia. <laughs> Every time, home, definitely filling it out. Corner, corner three. See 19 there for Youngblood, the sophomore, who has not endured a sophomore slump by any means. Unanimous no. ASUN All-Freshman team last year. Top 10 in the conference in scoring and rebounding. And now working on a 20-point performance. Four of six in free throw shooting, six of nine from the floor, five rebounds, two helpers, five steals in 22 minutes. And coming in today, averaging 13 points. You like to see this from Youngblood because, again, he's settling in to who he is and what he is for the team. And that's another good play defensively by him. But Tacoa Falls able to come away with a couple of points there from Luke Hartenberg. Right off the make, they're going back into that full court press. Now you see Jennings at the top. But see if he can contain this pressure. And they are. It's a subtle pressure. They get it past half court. Now you go into your offensive set if you're Kennesaw State. Yowls are doubling up the Screaming Eagles here at home, 80 to 40. Defensive foul here. That's the third on Lance Smith. The impact player with just three points today. Tough night in field goal shooting, just one of 12. Kennesaw State, 60% from the force, 26 of 43. Something that head coach Amir Abdurrahim will obviously enjoy for his squad. Trying to work out the Kings coming off that Christmas break. And it pops in and out on the free throw attempt. If you're Tacoa Falls, you got to be careful because now Kennesaw State, they're shooting two. Every time you foul them, you're going to have to find a way of not fouling but coming up with some steals. Long J misses there from Mitchell. Rebound number nine for Rogers. Sweet bounce over to Springs with a high advantage. Turns, quarter bomb on cleanup duty. Pinball, owl ball. I think Nate Robman, Nate Springs touched it. Then you see Quarterbaum. Then you see Youngblood get a, get a hand in there. Kim, they end up with the ball, but Nate Springs, you would like to see him. That possession, pretty much getting one or two dribbles and going up strong instead of finishing it with the left hand. Inbounds to Case and Jennings. And Springs unable to corral the alley oop. Caldwell, pump fake, releases, sky short. Deep pass, Cordobomb, rolls through. Great move, it was the hop, it was the hop to get in the middle of the lane, get the defender to pass you, pass you and then finish in strong. Great move from Cordobomb, but great vision from Spencer to find him up court. Two off his career high. Couple of makes here for Cordobaum, comes up with a Tacoa Falls turnover. We'll get the sub here before Kennesaw State inbounds. Stroud and Moultrie back in. Youngblood and Jennings to the sideline. You see that right there, Amir Abdurrahim coaching up Youngblood. Pretty hard there, 80 to 4, 82 to 40 lead. That's part of the process, right? Mm -hmm. every, every little thing. It's the details. Matters Panic here. Absolutely. I'm sorry to cut you off, but no, it's the details. Right. Paying attention to the details. You see Nate Springs getting it down low and finishing. That's what you want to see from Nate, but paying attention to the details. When you're up this big, a lot of times coaches overlook a couple of things. Not Coach Amir. He paid notice a detail that young blood could make a change. Brought him to the sideline and addressed it before he got to the bench. What were the details on that dunk? <laughs> the details was finishing up strong every <laughs> single time like this if you're Nate Springs. That's the details. Do exactly this every possession if you can. Lance Smith on the drive there for Tacoa Falls. His second bucket. Springs. Here are the best place to find tickets to the hottest sports, concerts, and live events near you. Visit TicketSmarter.com or download the app 
to secure your tickets right now. Smith on the run. Bill for the offensive infraction as Moultrie hits the deck. <laughs> it took Moultrie a minute to get up off the ground because on that charge, he lined it up well, got in front of the defender, squared up right in the middle of the chest. <laughs> Great defensive stop for Moultrie, individually sliding over, getting that charge and getting the ball back to your team. They practice charges. I don't know how many times you have to practice where you get hit and you oh, do yeah. the full tumble afterward into the goal post. Yeah, we, we, called, we did it the same thing. You take the charge, your team runs over, yelling, picking you up. <laughs> and he's got 13 points. That's a high for him in his Kennesaw State uniform. Rogers in and out on the tray. But you know what killed me, Nolan? We go through this this drill every single practice before we finish. Mm -hmm. Then have players still never wanted to take a charge in a game. Oh. I never understood it. And I was one of those guys. Rogers feeds it over to Moultrie. Make nice that finish. 15 Yummy. for Moultrie. Moultrie. At this point, Kennesaw is just coasting. Um, you you want to avoid any injuries at this point. Um, if, you, if you're Kennesaw, just try to find some things offensively that you can work on and bring to the table when you go to the conference play. Hey, you said Rodgers keep picking up those dimes. That's seven assists here for Rodgers. Nine picking points. Up. Picking them up. And when I mentioned it last time, I, and I thought the camera had it, but you saw young blood on the side, on the side and he just pretend like he picked the dime up off the court. He's just picking them up tonight. He's finding his teammates. He's not really worried about his points because with a player like Spencer Rodgers, you know your offense is going to be there. Pick the dimes up with the teammates. Caldwell, short on the three. And possession remains with Tacoa Falls. Nine on the shot clock. Again, up next for Tacoa Falls, another exhibition matchup at Charleston Southern on January 2nd. We're getting into conference play. Rankins, too strong on the jumper. Cordobom lobs ahead. Moultrie chases it down. And Stroud travels. And for the Owls, they'll begin a sun competition at home against Jacksonville University. Your new head coach on January the 5th. Remember those games last year back when uh, COVID scheduling changed things, so you had back-to-back -back games against the same opponent every single weekend. And KSU opened up a sun play against Jacksonville, and both those games came right down to the wire. Yeah, so you know this is going to be a good game. It's going to be a good matchup, and I, I expect the same thing out of this game. Cordobaum with the defensive board. Cordobaum shows off the handles, bounces to Stroud. Rogers nails it. 12 for Spencer Rogers. Gives him the double double to go along with his 10 rebounds. What gets a player going? Sometimes it's defensively, sometimes it's offensively, sometimes it's picking up dimes. And I'm a true believer that his ability to pick up these dimes so far has contributed to his offensive play because everything is kind of coming slow to right now for Spencer Rogers. It's his second double-double of the season following the November 28th shellacking of Charleston Southern, which he had 10 points and 10 rebounds in. We have a screaming eagle getting teed up. I'm not sure where, where the argument comes in because realistically, I think the house had, a, had an argument of you see Lance Smith possibly fouling Brandon going to the, to the side. That yep. was a no call, but Lance Smith popped up, said something to the referee, got himself a technical foul. That's about the look that you would imagine for a litter depths at this stage of the ball game, with what just transpired right there for Lance Smith, who's had a frustrating game. We said he's, he's the impact player who struggled from the field. Tonight, sitting at 2 of 13 with five points as he fouls out. You have those games as players, and it's the bounce back. What do you do the next? for a hard-won Mississippi and flipped back on. 
We have a flopping warning. We have a power gun out. Bad things come in threes. Terrence, I don't know what's next. We've only got 4.30 left in this ballgame. I don't want to walk outside. I don't really have too much luck. But I don't know what's more impressive, the lights going out and coming back on in a point two seconds, or just right on cue, we have Rodgers hitting a three as soon as we come back on our air. <laughs> Rodgers literally shooting the lights out of the Convocation Center. Moultrie with 18 points now with that three. One off his career high of 19. Springs out ahead to Moultrie. Here you go, a new career high for Jameer Moultrie with 21. This is just practice at this point. Get the rebound, go out on the break. You see your guard streaking up, finding Moultrie to finish it in the transition. Just running the score up right now and again. Three minutes left in the game for Kennesaw State Owls. You just want to finish this game with no injuries. Yep. Terrell Burden was unavailable today. A couple of assistant coaches. No one has left the game with any apparent injury for Kennesaw State. Want to be as healthy as you can. You're right. For the start of the East Sun play is Mitchell cans the three. And let's mention that it's only there that you see the bench up right now for the Owls, and they're clapping because they're one point away from, from hitting that, that 100 mark. We expect it. it's going to happen, but it's, it's who's going to make this. Who's going to make it the bucket to push him there? Springs turns around and throws down. Hey, okay, Nick Springs. Finishing, not putting it on the ground to allow the smaller guards to come in, possibly steal it, keeping it up top, finishing it strong. Moultrie going for the swipe and comes away with it. Cordova <laughs> tried to turn off the lights again with a left-handed smash. <laughs> and that will send us to our final media timeout. There it is again, Nate Spring, second dunk of the night. And the Owls are flying by the Screaming Eagles here at home. It's time for the Hungry Howie's Player of the Game. And I think it's worthy. Chris Youngblood, 6-9 from the field, 4-6 from the free throw line, 5 freebies, 5 steals. Chris Youngblood put on a performance today. Let's see if that can now translate in conference play, but today he showed out. Powerful performance. The Convocation Center couldn't even handle it for a full 40 minutes. Had to recharge. <laughs> recharge in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Youngblood, he really put on a performance. He gave you a little bit of everything today. And I mentioned it before, let's pay attention to his defense. And he really made some good stops tonight, getting mm -hmm. in, getting some deflections, coming up with a couple steals also. 101-48, Kennesaw State cruising past Tacoa Falls here at home. Shooting over 60% from the floor, 14 of 26 from beyond the arc, some video game type numbers. <laughs> and for those that play video games, it has been a difficult week. The passing of John yeah. Madden, a, a titan in the industry, from as a player, a coach, and of course, the all popular Madden video game. As Jennings rolls it in on the assist from Moultrie. And, uh, I had noticed Kennesaw State head coach Amir Abdurrahim had tweeted out a, an ESPN tweet about all the different Madden covers, and I asked him about Madden and, and what his thoughts were. There we go, Youngblood adds to his total. The two switch up the assist and the scoring there. And said he always remembers a kid saving up his money and going to buy the game, playing the game. And up until the past few years, he'd always bought it and played it with guys on his teams. Mm -hmm. This is a way to connect. Yep. Says the last time he played was, I think when we were still all in lockdown with COVID with Chris Youngblood, he said Youngblood took him to town. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right. You can't take you can't take time for away from the game and then step back on the controllers and think you're going to be the same player. It doesn't work like that. And I just remember playing Madden with my friends, just being in the room. It, it's, it is that camaraderie, is that brotherhood that you create by playing these games. And a legend, definitely, that, and he's going to be missed greatly. One minute remaining. 
Less than a minute to go here as Kennesaw State will close out the non-conference portion with a big win against Toccoa Falls. Owls won this ball game 106-44 a year ago. And a near similar result here this time. And again up next against Jacksonville at home January 5th. And for Toccoa Falls, on the road at Charleston Southern, January 2nd. Long three canned by Deshaun Ware out of Pepperell High School. Yeah, you saw spurts uh, from Toccoa Falls <clears throat> where they played hard and they had the intensity. There were just, just wasn't enough. Uh, they were spurts and they, they just had to, to string it together. They couldn't find their rhythm. Kennesaw State, they kept their, their foot on the gas tonight. Kaysen Jennings dribbles it out. And Kennesaw State picks up its fifth win of the campaign.